Jen? She seemed into the uh, the teaser reel for your for your series, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Mariah, who calls herself Supergirl, says she often sleeps just three hours a night. When told Lopez claimed to get eight, Mariah said, quote, if I had the luxury of not actually having to sing my own songs, I'd do that too. Yeah. J-Lo can't sing. And did you know that J-Lo doesn't know that she can, can't sing? Well, that's the thing that is... <laughs> she did an interview and then she was like, she... I never knew that people didn't think I could sing. I thought I could sing. Like, she... yeah. like this. It reminds me like when I was 16 in the Bronx, running up and down the... Okay. <clears throat> I truly have left this woman alone for years. I have just been annoyed in silence since high school. And guess what? I'm a Puerto Rican woman from the Bronx who went to the same high school as you, and you're lying. Please stop using us to look human. We are sick of you. You don't do shit for us. Keep our names out of your mouth. We're not running up and down the block. Not all of us do that for kicks. You're stupid. Yeah. If you're Jennifer Lopez, then you're not having a good time right now. It really seems like we're about to witness the downfall of JLo. Her tour is a whole flop and basically everything that could go wrong has gone wrong for her. And you know who's in the sidelines laughing it all up? The songbird supreme Mariah Carey. You know I've got the whole juicy story, so stick around and I'll tell you all about it. In case you haven't heard, Jennifer Lopez put out her first album in a decade last month. It's titled This Is Me Now which is an obvious reference to an album she put out 18 years prior called This Is Me Then. The problem is, it debuted on the Billboard 200 chart as number 38. And I'm gonna be real with you, I didn't even know it was a thing. I suppose ads for this album sucked beyond measure, but what I did know about was her documentary and musical documentary she spent a fortune to make and people are still laughing at her about. Which, if you want me to make a video about that, let me know in the comments. Even her kids think it sucks. According to Variety, they heard some of her old music playing one day and then this interaction happened. They said, is this you, mommy? I'm like, yeah, this is an album I did 18 years ago. I played them another song and asked them if they liked it and they said, yes. And I said, I wrote this. And then they're like, yeah, we like this more than the music you make now. She laughed. Ouch, but a good ouch. She was also set to go on tour this year for the album, and that's still on. But dates from August 20 to 31 in Atlanta, Cleveland, Houston, Nashville, New Orleans, and Tampa have all been canceled. In fact, Cleveland and Houston were removed from the tour list on Ticketmaster altogether. There are still 30 concerts in total, but a lot of tickets for the shows still on the list are unsold. On Ticketmaster's site, typically blue is an indication that seats have already been purchased in a section, while gray sections are unsold. And I checked out a lot of the tour locations, and right now, everyone I checked had some gray areas in them. I know that Ticketmaster isn't the best at updating this stuff, but it seems like these shows are far from being sold out. But the one I was most interested in? The shows at Madison Square Garden in her home state, New York. I'm noticing a lot of gray over there. Now, you might be thinking. But video person, that concert is in August and it's only April. There's still time for people to buy tickets. Maybe they just haven't yet. Okay, fair. But if this were a Taylor Swift or Beyonce tour, those tickets would be sold out in like half an hour. It really seems like JLo thinks she's more relevant than she actually is. She was the it girl back in the 90s and 2000s, but she's taken such a long break that it seems like people aren't into her anymore. Some of these tickets were being priced at like a thousand dollars for the floor. JLo, uh, uh, Jennifer, just like the, the ticket prices for your show, um, four fifty. Did you mean that? Was that an accident? I need to have a session with your Delulu coach because you are. I think you need to go back and listen to your new album because then you'll be like, oh, I shouldn't be charging people this much. You need to have at least this many Grammys. To be able to charge that. That's a hundred dollars more than what I paid for Beyonce, and she has this many Grammys. So Jennifer, Lopez, the cheapest tickets they have is $79.95 for the JLo fan club pre-sale. Okay? And that's for section 200, all the way up there. Okay? And this is for Rosemont Theater, which is tiny. Now I wanted to check here from F2. This is F2, a thousand four hundred and ninety-five dollars to go see Jennifer Lopez at Rosemont Theater. Pause, pause, Jennifer. Jennifer, aren't you Jenny from the block? These ticket prices, didn't you learn from Bad Bunny? Who's paying 
this tic- As this TikToker points out, a Vegas residency might have been more JLo's speed. Jennifer Lopez in this economy? I'm not a musician, I'm not an artist, I'm not a pop star, but I feel like at a certain point, you gotta realize we aren't where we were 20 years ago. Times have changed, music has changed, and the landscape has changed, and sometimes a, a huge tour is just not what it's giving. And that is not even a shade to Jennifer Lopez to say nobody wants to see her or nobody else wants to see anybody else whose tour got canceled or date got canceled. Like that's not the case. But we gotta think about smaller venues. We gotta think about residencies. I feel like JLo could definitely have a residency. Usher really killed it with his, so JLo probably could too. But I honestly have no idea why she thought her tickets would sell at higher prices than Beyonce's. Nobody loves Jennifer Lopez more than Jennifer Lopez. Since this flop of a tour, she's rebranded it, and it's now called This Is Me Live The Greatest Hits. Basically, since her new album wasn't hitting, she decided to include her whole discography in an attempt to get people to come to her shows hoping to hear their favorite oldies. This new name isn't being advertised anywhere, but instead in various places, it's listed as This Is Me Now Live. The difference can be seen on her Twitter post, where the original post includes the now cancelled tour dates and is called This Is Me Now The Tour. The new one is clearly labeled This Is Me Now Live, and the cancelled tour dates are removed. What's really weird, and I had to watch her documentary to figure this out, is that the new album is about her love with Ben Affleck, but they didn't do any sort of PR media stuff together about it. So it really seems like JLo's going on about how much she loves Ben, but he could care less about this album and her tour, her documentary about them, or anything she's doing, honestly. But one person has been on the sidelines telling us all along how full of herself JLo is, and that's Miss Mariah Carey. We first found out there was beef between the two of them when a reporter was asking her about different singers, and Mariah was nothing but complimentary about them until she got to Jennifer Lopez, and she said this. Und was ist mit JLo? I don't know. Die kenne ich nicht. Oops. That started a whole feud to pop off. I didn't see Mariah because at the time she wasn't playing. She hadn't started yet. Who? But no, I'm playing because that's what Mariah said about Jennifer one time. She does say that. Yeah, she She's does. She's forgetful, I guess. Yes. <laughs> Not many times. Do you know each other? No. No. Okay. You, here's she the says thing. you know her. You know what? I'm very forgetful. Okay. Apparently, <laughs> I'm forgetful. Yes. Because I don't remember the fact that it was just like, hi, I'm so and so, and then like. Hi. That's it. Right. If I had never had a conversation with you and someone asked me about you, I'd be like, I don't know him, but he seems cool. Now, there's a reason that Mariah was so adamant that she doesn't know JLo. JLo is an absolute snake in the industry, and she'll do whatever it takes to steal from other artists, specifically black female artists, and throw them under the bus. Have you ever noticed that she doesn't seem to have many female friends in the industry? Check this out, though. The feud goes back even further sometime during the 90s. Back then, JLo started getting a little too close with Mariah's then-husband, Tommy Mottola. He was the CEO of Sony Music Entertainment and also 44 years old to 23 when they got married in 1993. Given the age gap, the size of the Grand Canyon, it's not surprising that that marriage didn't end well. They got divorced and she eventually opened up about the control and abuse she endured at his hands. And Jennifer knew all about how controlling Tommy was to Mariah. It was definitely not a secret in the music industry. Everybody knew, but she went ahead and cozied up to him and let him use her to hurt Mariah. And Mariah told us all about it when she released her memoir in 2020 called The Meaning of Mariah Carey. When she was working on developing the soundtrack for the movie Glitter, she'd been listening to Yellow Magic Orchestra's Firecracker and wanted to sample it on the movie's main track, Loverboy. She said that her choice, did not go unnoticed by Sony executives. She says that after hearing my new song, using the same sample I used, Sony rushed to make a single for another female entertainer on the label, whom I don't know. Did you catch that? That I don't know her reference? Damn, Mariah actually went there and I'm loving it. Anyway, Mariah accuses Tommy of sabotaging her career and that JLo made herself available to help him in that regard. She didn't care if Mariah got hurt, if it helped her career. So then, Mariah put a sample of Candy by Cameo on Loverboy. That's not the end of the JLo Matola sabotage, though. Mariah had picked Ja Rule to collaborate with, and Matola got him to do the remix of I'm Real with JLo instead. So Mariah brought in Debrat for her song. 
so she had to change her sample and choose another rapper for her song. That was pretty much everything about the song, and those two sabotaged it at every turn. And it's not just Mariah that says they were trying to screw her over. Irv Gotti backed up her claims in his docuseries called The Murder Inc. Story. He said, me and Rule had did a record with Mariah. It was a duet. Matol told me, make a duet with Ja and JLo. He was trying to f over his ex-wife Mariah and beat her to the punch so she can't put out the record with Ja. But then she said, after all that f Loverboy ended up being the best-selling single of 2001 in the United States. I'm real. I'm living for that subtle shade there. I mean, you can't blame her for being petty. They went out of their way to mess up her career to promote I'm Real, and then Mariah's song not only did better than I'm Real, it wound up on top. People speculate about whether Jennifer Lopez actually knew about Tommy using her song and sabotaging Mariah. But honestly, if he told Irv Gotti and Ja Rule, then why wouldn't he tell JLo? There's nothing in me that thinks he told some people associated with that collaboration, but not the biggest name involved with it. Believe it or not though, it wasn't just Mariah that got screwed over with a steal. Allegedly, I'm Real was supposed to be sang by Ashanti, but Tommy took it from Ashanti and gave it to JLo instead, but actually kept some of Ashanti's vocals. That was way, way back. That was before I was signed mm -hmm. to Murder, Inc. Um, and they kept my hook and you know they kept some of the backgrounds and ad libs and stuff like that and it was funny it was a bittersweet because i was really excited because it was j-lo you know what i mean but i was so mad at earth because i was like you know i wanted that record <laughs> i've always ever since i saw friday mm -hmm. you know what i mean Mary Jane. i was like you give me that i want that record i was so mad but i i was i was happy at the same time because it was j j-lo's breakout song if you had my love wasn't even hers she was dating Diddy back in 1999, and he came in and got the song for her from another singer named Shantae Moore. Her song was called If I Gave Love. Leo and I came out around the same time when her first album came out, and Rodney Jerkins actually came and wrote this wonderful song for me called um, If I Gave Love. And you know, the Jennifer Lopez song was If You Had My Love. He wrote the same song for her. I heard that it was because Puff Daddy walked in and said, and heard my song and said, I want that song. And he was like, yeah, well, that's hard to take it. You know, we wrote that for Shantae and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I want that song. So Rodney wrote really the same song. Honestly, if you hear my song, it's the really? same song. Oh, Mine says, man. if you had my love, then give me. If you had my trust, would you use it against me? Hers, I don't know. I don't, can't remember because it's so close, I can't even sing it right now. Her song, Jenny from the Block, has vocals on it from Natasha Ramos. I want to clarify something. JLo did indeed go into the studio and lay down some BVGs over mine. So I wouldn't say she's so much lip syncing. However, the backgrounds are predominantly me, some ad libs, and laughs as well. That's just crazy. The song that's supposed to be about JLo isn't even sung by JLo. She's stolen songs and vocals from Brandy, Christina Milian, and McCabe Riddick, which, if you don't know, has written hits like Rihanna's Unfaithful and Beyonce's Deja Vu. At this point, she's charging people a thousand dollars to come to a concert full of songs she didn't write or sing in the first place. You know who could charge a thousand dollars for shows that people would show up to? Mariah Carey. But she doesn't because she's too busy sitting back, laughing at JLo's life crashing and burning around her after trying to screw Mariah over like that. But now I want to hear what you think about all of this. Would you pay 1k just for JLo's new album? What about to hear her old stuff too? And what about her stealing music from Mariah Carey and other women in the industry? Sound off in the comments and let me know. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!